This video is for haters only. If you fall down, is this your wife or your kid? Save your crying stories for tomorrow's interview. How did you get this job? All right, guys, the day has come. You're gonna see me in this video actually installing roof, metal roof, as a matter of fact. I have Tony here, uh, technical director for Tilco Roofing. This video is for haters only. For those of you guys who for years been saying, Dimitri, you're not a real roofer, you cannot install, we've never seen you on the roof, guess what? We're gonna go on a roof and not gonna lie to you, I installed two metal roofs in my life. This is gonna be my third one. I wanna make sure I do it right. So I'm gonna be in school of metal roof installation. Tony's gonna to teach me how properly install Tilco roofing system. Tony, how's it going today? Good, how are you? Are you the roofer? I'm not the roofer, but I'll show you how to roof. Oh, <laughs> I like that. So uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about the stone coated steel today. Uh, it's their CF shingle panel. It's part of a high performance roofing system being that we provide all the components that go along with the roof system. So it, it's the ease of installation, but also water security is the biggest point to the whole thing. So if you look at this panel, it's got a continuous head lap all the way across the panel. So there's no weak point at the top of the, of the clip. We fasten the panel back through here. So all of our fasteners will be on the top side of the panel, sure. not fastening through the panel. So anything that blows back in here is gonna catch this location on the panel, which is called a head check, and run out. This, by the way, feels amazing, feels very solid. We're gonna just briefly show you what's going on here so you have an idea, and then we did not choose easier job here. <laughs> no. So you will have every detail of the roof there is. So it's an interlocking panel. So Dimitri, if you take that panel, we have three water channels here. Okay. That part of the panel is gonna overlap this part here okay. and, and lock together. So this part goes over the third water channel, locks together. So that part is now continuously locked together. One single head check and strong as can be. So that's the lock together, unsupported. Yeah, you could hit it and it's, sure, sure, sure. it's locked together and there's not a, other, another stone coated steel product that's gonna have that sort of lock. I like how it feels, this granules, it feels just like shingles. It is, so we're using ceramic granules that's embedded into acrylic. Clear acrylic glaze goes over the top and it's cured in the oven. That's what gives us our limited lifetime warranty. Nice. It's lightweight, pound and a half per square foot installed. Uh, normal size panel is roughly 48 inches in length, 14 and a half inch exposure. So we have a starter. This it's is a low profile. Different kind of starter. It is. It's all integrated with your drip edge M1. We manufacture you, it. You manufacture it. Correct. So it's a Tilcor product. Tilcor product. So everything okay. we see here is manufactured by Tilcor. Got it. It goes along with part of the system. It's huh. low profile. This part that you're looking at here sits on the deck. Yep. Panel, why, why do you need this lap? That's like, where the nose of the panel interlocks. Got it. So with this fastened down to the roof deck, that gives us our 120 mile an hour wind uplift capabilities. Sure. The whole starter would have to lift up to, for the nose of the panel to lift. Okay. So if we take that, just kick that small piece off, oh, you could just interlock it onto the starter and that's it. Oh wow. Nobody else makes a starter like ours. Th th this is probably the best starter I've ever seen. Look at this. I mean, look at this. This is really well designed, well engineered. It's, it's bulletproof. So we designed yeah. this around the product. So all the components that go along with this roofing system um, Man, this was is so designed cool. and engineered. Wow. Now this is nice. Okay. Okay. So the rake or gable end, everything terminates on top of the starter. Him. And then the panels will lock. How into do you it. finish the size? We have a stone coated cover. Is that the one? Is that the piece? Okay. So it's stone coated to match. So this is right at this installs right over the top of your OSB over the underlayment. Okay. Since that OSB is not protected, we make a stone coated piece that goes over the top. Flip it around the other way. And then we install this before the panels install. So it's going to sit like that. But to lock it on, you just twist it 
And that goes covered. before the sh shingles. That goes before the shingles. Because wow. you, can't, you can't make that rotation with the shingles on. So the other way, if they do install the shingles first. Can you remove it after the roof is done or it's going to lock it in? It's going to lock it in. The shingles will. The shingles, it, everything's snug and tight. Um, and the wind cannot up. So we it. will put a fastener in top just to hold it, keep it from sliding or rattling. Got it. Like that. What's your wind warranty with the on there? standard installation is 120 miles an hour, and we could go higher. If we meet Miami Dade or uh, Florida building code. That's 130, right? Yep, with more fasteners. Sure. So instead of five fasteners per panel, we're going up to six or eight. This is something that we developed that's exclusive really to us. It's called a hip under channel. So if you imagine the, the hip going up the roof, this sits down over the top of the hip. Everything that we manufacture has multiple ribs and hem. a hem. So you have a primary water channel here, hem. secondary here, and then your hem that anything jumps the Is this the where one. the roof, uh, the final shingle will get cramped? So the final shingle actually co covers over the top of it. If we grab, the shingle would be actually angled cut and it's just gonna sit okay. to, to the center of it. And then we have a piece of trim, a hip and ridge cap that goes over the top of it. I see. So if any water gets around the panel on the hip, it hits this water channel and comes out at the eave of the roof. One of the last pieces that do we have. Do you manufacture it too or? We do manufacture the valley. So most of them don't have the ribs to create the water channels. We have a tall center rib. Anything that has a possibility. And this is the main reasons roofs leak. Like right there in the valley, especially in the winter time. I mean, we're at Salt Lake, we have some snow here. I see we have heating cables here at this house, so they probably have standing snow. I mean, right. just. So <laughs> we help mitigate ice damage because of the airspace that's created True. above the roof. I see so that. above sheeting ventilation, the heat's coming from the attic, it goes to your hip gable and eaves. So that helps mitigate the ice damming capabilities. True. That's going to happen. I see that that helps control that heat. This is probably the most beautiful dollar value I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And that's demonstrating our products can be cut with a saw. We don't sure. have any limitations to that. And that was the other point. The sure. small piece of panel that you were showing, that was cut with a saw. Um, since it's a zinc aluminum alloy product, it's self-healing. It doesn't get so hot that it's gonna burn the edge of the zinc where it's not gonna be able to perform. This is for around pipe and penetrations. So it's triple flash, if you will. So we start off with what's called an underpan. This hooks onto the top of the shingle below it. We cut an opening in here and this sits over the top of the pipe. So after the flashing's in, everything's cut. We'll have a pipe flashing that's sitting through here. It'll get sealed with granules on it. So once that's all done, if any water gets through this opening for any reason, it's gonna hit the flashing run out on this. So it's just yeah. expanding the base. You see how narrow a, a standard base is for a pipe flashing? Yes. It's only about, what, 10 inches? Mm -hmm. This is 30 inches. So it gives us that much more capabilities of water Again, running off. Smart detail, very smart detail. Why do you have this rib here on the bottom? So this rib, Oh. interlocks into the top of the panel but it still wow. allows clearance underneath now it for the makes next sense. panel to interlock onto it now it clicks here just like it clicks here yeah <laughs> okay we talked about the starter yep. so originally when we looked at the starter it was this design um, but it doesn't give you the high wind uplift capabilities and I asked New Zealand if they could make this one that we're showing here today, the Tilcor starter that we have right now. Did you just say you ask New Zealand? New Zealand is where our product is manufactured because sure. we're using the best steel possible. So they said, oh no, we couldn't make this um, because of all the brakes in the imp pallets, all in a small area. Kim? So I grew up in the heating and air conditioning business. So my dad has a sheet metal shop. So I went up to my parents' shop. My dad came out and goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm making a starter piece to see if it will work. Don't tell me you designed this. I did. Oh, wow. So Do you have patent in it? <laughs> yeah, I wish. So <laughs> it's, I wanted something low in profile that wouldn't block water if it ever got on the deck for any reason. Okay. Also, that has more wind uplift capabilities. So we have one layer of metal, 
the nose and then another hem on top of itself. So it's super strong plus the two hems back here. So it's super strong for wind uplift. And it's low profile, so when it's on the roof, everything sits at the same plane as the roof deck itself. Just as far as tools go, we cut with a saw. Hand benders for doing any little bends or that we need to do. Sure. Snips, soapstone, which is not going to show real well on white, but it shows great on the stone coated panels for marking where you're going to make your cuts. Sure. Um, and it wipes right off. So instead of using a marker that's permanent on a white face, we're going to use something that blood and blue. Since it's from New Zealand, how is it not a centimeter? Well, we designed everything at six foot six lengths okay. for traveling down our oven. So we'll do the painting process and cures in the oven. So that's how we did it. But we took all of the measurements in metric and converted it over. So if you look at the New Zealand website, it's all in metric or millimeters and centimeters. Uh, here just like the rest of the world. Correct. We're just special here. That's right. <laughs> Since it's an outside corner, we're just gonna make a little okay. snip. So that's step one. Just as a reference mark. All we're doing is just marking 45s on the pan on the material. So go ahead and make just the thick part. The thick part. So you're going to cut that line to the center of that one. And then you do the same thing on the other side in. So. Cut in on this line. All the way down? All the way down to that point. Should have given you some gloves. Gloves are for girls. <laughs> so we're going to have it just go over and under. So I'm just going to take it, put that a little bit in. Take the bender. Hold it on that line like that. Okay. And grab this this piece. This and bend one? It and bend it up. I see. So now that's your pre-made corner that goes on on one piece. And it's completely blocked and watertight. Can I? You could clean that up by yeah. just snipping that off. If you fall down, make sure we have footage of it. <laughs> then it's not. <laughs> Let's pull this out. Okay. Uh, I'm probably going to need the hammer, the little baby one. You know, I have to go in from the, the side here. So, what are you trying to do? We'll pull that out completely. There you go. So, that's what's called a spike and ferrule. Okay. So, this is what was holding the gutters on before. Yep. before they had these type of straps. We're not removing the gutter, right? No. What, so yeah. what we should probably do is just take a screw okay. and just to hold it in place because the yeah, right. that's fine. Okay. Do yours, hold the mine. Normally, like in California, these straps are every four feet. Okay. But if four. You, wow. Yeah, because we don't have that much rain, so they're what every 16 inches or two feet. Yep. Here. I mean, look look at this, guys. I mean, comment below if you're not impressed or if you're impressed with this. I mean, look at this. This is. This is what happens when HVAC guys get in the roofing business. So now we're ready to slide this around the corner and I'll try to get it behind the straps. Just don't rip my face apart. Austin, will you come back and grab those straps out of the way, please? 
Dude, I've spent too much time in the industry. <laughs> How many years? I grew up when I was a kid, starting in about late middle school, early high school. What? I started installing this type of roofing. So my dad originally owned the roofing center and we only did stone coated roofing then. We never did any other type. We didn't do asphalt shingles or anything else. And so I've installed, you know, four or 500 of this type of roof. We got the tip channel here. Okay. Let's throw one on in just for giggles. Just for giggles. Yes. Just, just for you, sir. I mean, look at this detail, guys. Can you believe this? And of course, we have a little step here. I'm gonna go ahead and. Because of the way that we're offset, this is raised a little bit higher. Sure. We don't need that gap is okay. Okay. So instead of collapsing it down, we leave the first fastener back about yeah. eight inches. Got it. And then from that point, continue up. Got it. It's about a it's about a quarter. Yep. If it's a little bit big, maybe three eighths of an inch. So what do I do with this? So this, this, this is going to cut top? off completely. Just cut that snap. Yep. Man, I missed labor, <laughs> which is. Some people wouldn't call it this yet, but this is awesome. Yeah, it's close. Oh. So now we're ready to install some No, we, we need. So we're starting here? We're going to start there. He's cutting that in, but we need a channel. I used to be in flooring business, and it's the same thing. You start What's with that? the cutting all the jams, yep. yes. the you. tightest spots around the kitchen, then once you go, you go. So here, we need yeah. a small piece of barge right in here. So it's going to be flush. Okay. From here. From here. From flush to to here. Where's the second one you want me? Up top. Up top. This feels good. My drain system. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to have a, a short course piece that's in here that's going to end up being in our way. Okay. Because um, we have to transition over here. Got it. So I get a clearance. Five fasteners per panel. Five fasteners, yep. got it. And then. Yep. Look at me working on this roof just by myself. No supervision whatsoever. Oh, what did I do? Did I cut it way too short? Oh uh, yeah, because we don't have this one here. Oh. Right. Got it. Got him down. Just pound, yeah, pound the step with your heel of your hand, palm. Or the little baby hammer. Yeah. No, there you go. I have two hammers right here. <laughs> happening now we made little mistake we admit it we're not perfect so we have to start over had a little come up with a different plan you can see how complicated it is we want to make sure it's right I mean we're filming for roofing insides right there's no there's no second option plan B is not an option I'm 
uh, I'm about one inch. You go. You get. You got a little play under that barge, so. So I need to do. Why we're so off now? We can slide it down. You got to play. Okay. Yeah. Just a couple for now. Because you're gonna go through with the short course too, which is where. I'm out. Come on, squeeze it a little harder. No, there's nothing to squeeze. Okay. So this is where we're, because we have this offset here, we're creating a short course at the eave. So it's going to be a little bit of a work to get through this transition because we need to get from here up onto that short course material. I'm just going to run it. I'm going to run it long. That's whatever works for you. There's no so just mark it flush here with the eaves um, on each side and then I'll cut it back at the valley angle so when it's said and done it's all going to be flush with the starter. I'm just worried for your safety. I don't want more weight on this plank. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Oh, that is god awful, Tony. It's not that far off. <laughs> well, I don't think I said a word the whole time I was up there. I was nothing but supportive. <laughs> So guys, we have three brands in one shot here. We have Tilker, Dave with Tilker. What's your title for? Uh, Vice President of Sales and Marketing. All right. Sales and Marketing, love it. We have a roofing center, guy yeah. who pretends to be a roofer. Well, he speaks Spanish, so. I might be a roofer. Might be a roofer. And we have roofing insides. What I want to talk about, we have a specialty product here, obviously, uh, metal roofing shingle here. And installing the job, I want to talk about sales and marketing real quick. Austin, how did you get this job? So this was a homeowner who came to a home show. We had a booth at the expo. They took some literature from us, um, didn't hear from them for about eight months, and then they called us. This was a home show in January, I believe. They called us in September of this year, and you know we're ready to move forward with their project. So one of our sales reps came out, one who specializes in this type of roofing. He's you know, been working with these products for 30 years now. So he was able to help them through the different options of do they want an asphalt shingle, do they want a metal roof. Um, they decided to go with a lifetime product and so we went through it and got the job that way. So it looks like it's very long cycle. How different is it selling metal roofs versus like shingle roofs? So the metal roofs are generally an upgrade for people. So it's a longer process. They want to do more research. Um, you know, they're spending more time researching online, looking at content. Um, a shingle roof, you know, you call people and it's like, you know, buying a commodity. Sure. You know, we obviously, you know, we all as roofers like to think we do a better job, but at a certain level, a 30 year, you know, an architectural shingle roof is an architectural shingle roof is an architectural shingle roof if they're done properly. Mm -hmm. So that's generally a, you know, a quicker sell cycle, it's a quicker install. Um, these are, you know, obviously a longer sell cycle. It's um, a longer install, but it's a lifetime product for the homeowner. Dave, what kind of uh, um, request or what kind of uh, inquiries do you have through your website, through your channel? Like, do, what kind of questions do you guys have when customers come directly to you? Uh, oddly enough, mo most of the questions that we get are around install. Install. Yeah, how do I install it? Because, you know, um, roofing contractors, they're, they, they want to sell what they're comfortable selling. And uh, so we do actually do a lot for uh, a roofing contractor that's doing their first tilt core roof. Um, you know, we'll help them with the estimate. Uh, we'll help them with the, uh, with the takeoff. Um, we'll even, you know, if they ask us to, we'll even show up and, and help them pitch it to the homeowner. Um, that's not, you know, it's not all that common, but um, one service that we do provide is, is we have a, um, a former roofing contractor that gets on the roof and with the crew and trains the crew uh, on how to install it. So, you know, we want the, we want all the learning curves to get out of the way on that, on that first roof so that they're comfortable selling it. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, the second and third time around. Any other tips to the contractors who may be getting into roofing sales? How did you get into this? So I got into doing this type of product. I, growing up, my dad was actually the one who introduced this type of product to this state my here home? in Utah. To yeah, this stone coated steel. How roofing. popular it is! You know, we right now are averaging 
we do about eight of these a month. Nice. Um, so we have a full-time in-house crew that does nothing but installs this type of roofing for us. And, you know, they just go job to job to job. And um, we run a smaller crew so that we can focus more. There's a lot of details with this. So we like to really focus on quality and we're able to keep them rolling. And, you know, we get, but it does, it does take a little bit to sell. The biggest thing we find is for a new sales rep, when we you know get somebody on our team and get them trained, the biggest thing for them is to get their head around the fact that yes, it's more expensive. The second they've seen one, done one, touched one, they understand the value and they're able to go out and sell that to the homeowner. So they usually double the price, how much more? A little less than double is where we're at generally. So um, yeah, that's right. How, how do you market it? How do you advertise it? Just as a matter of the roof, educational pieces? So we do a lot of different things. You know, we advertise as people who want a metal roof. We really advertise to a husband and wife. The husband who wants metal because he wants to never touch it again, and the wife who doesn't want her house to look like a barn, that's our ideal customer. Okay. You know, we find that 90% of the roofs that we do for homeowners in this type of product, they have put their previous roof on. They're getting older. They look at it and they say, okay, our last roof lasted maybe 15 to 20 years, and they just don't want to deal with it 15 to 20 years from now. You know, the husband might be thinking, well, if I pass, I just want my wife to be taken care of. And that's really, I would say, between about 45 to 60 are the people who we're selling these to every day because they're thinking, you know, I could do a new roof now, but 15 years from now, I don't want to deal with this again. So Probably you have referrals, what other, like, top lead gens for you for us our top lead gens on this type of product are three things um home shows are great it just the target market that we really market to people see they, they go to that they touch it they see it they get ideas even if they're not roofing they'll take literature and call us later um, we do a lot of online marketing so a lot of facebook marketing specifically around you know metal roofing with upgraded looks so we do a lot of videos showing the products the final products because really people are visual. They like something to look nice. You know, they want a metal durable roof, but they want it to look really nice. And so we do a lot of advertising that way. And then direct mail, oddly enough, has been a very effective. Direct mail? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when we're doing a job like this, we'll door hang six, 10 doors around it. We don't really door knock, sure. but we will put some flyers around. And, you know, homeowners see a different install process. They see it going on different and they start asking around. And so that generates a lot of business as well. Yep. Is that what you want me to tell, say on camera? I want you to say the truth. To me. <laughs> oh. Once again, you have to. happy that's what matters the most it was challenging two days we ended up leaving earlier yesterday because we had to do two important interviews I didn't want to be late so we cut it off but thank you guys for getting me back on the roof installing it. <laughs> it's good for you it, it, it's very good for you but you know it's so challenging when your phone rings 24 7 I mean I, I, I missed a phone call with a CEO of multi-billion dollar company <laughs> today <laughs> I left my phone down and style on the roofs, get into it. And I'm like, what time is it? Heck, I have to get down. And it was a conference call, but uh, I missed those days. I missed hard work and I want to finish this roof, but we have to catch the that plane. Good. Here, here's Every my good. Here's what my final conclusion. Tilcor is awesome and I really, really mean it. What's your average ticket on Tilcor? Um, between 18 to 35,000 generally. Think about it. So been in business for what? 30 almost 40 years yep 40 years in business now sons are running the business moving paperwork obviously uh, when camera arrives they go on, on the road they actually <laughs> install some but it's it's amazing product it does last uh, nothing like asphalt shingles 
Um, we say it how it is on Roofing Insights. Mm -hmm. It is a better product. It cost more, but it's fun to install. I enjoyed it. Truly enjoyed it. Chris, any final word that you want to add? No, well, I appreciate you coming out here. The more people, you know, the thing is, obviously... How, how did I do? That's what I want to hear. How did I do? You did fantastic. <laughs> Say it again. You did fantastic. Great <laughs> job, Dimitri. No, but I think, uh, you know, obviously, I think Tilcor is a great product, but just getting stone coated in front of more people is beneficial for everybody. It's just, it's going to help the, 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 the niche of, of the stone coated brand grow. And uh, so the more eyes we can get in front of the better. Here's my final message to you, whether you're a homeowner or the contractor, you want to learn something like this, if you're the contractor, it's an amazing niche. You can become true professional, you can uh, master your craft. Not many people are willing to learn this and it's harder, it takes a little bit longer, but it's amazing. So I think the niche is there, it's growing. Metal is one of those categories that's on the rise. If you look at the trends in the roofing industry, it's one of the fastest growing trends fastest growing categories there is a reason for it it's green it's durable there's no gimmicks and it does last so five star ratings from roofing insights sure. comment below what you guys think if you're the homeowner need a quote or need the contractors let us know we'll connect you with the best of the best see you guys in the next video